so it's time for one of our usual chats with uh, manager Simon Weaver. So we're obviously going to be discussing a few things to do with the new signings that are coming and obviously things to do with in and around the CNG Stadium. But um, let's start with a bit of a synopsis from you about the last part of last season. We just played Altrincham, we won 3 1, we moved into the top three. Everything was looking fantastic. Mm. And then we sort of we went through a period again of drawing and losing, and for some reason we seemed to lose that momentum. Yeah, it was a tough time. You know, after that Altrincham game, we were all riding high and wave of optimism. And, uh, everything was heading in the right direction. We actually thought we could go up at that point, at least uh, via the playoffs. Um, but as sometimes happens in football, you know, fate goes against you. We had a lot of injuries. Um, we had uh, a couple of big injuries in the, including Lee Franks going down with his medial ligament, uh, big injury in the Bradford Park Avenue game uh, three days after the Altrin victory. And then we had Chris Hall Howe, uh, we had Shane Killer Cow, Adam Novakovsky, the heavy blow to his head, he was ruled out. So that's big part of the um, the core of the team that was missing, um, that was actually in the team when we were 15, I think we lost once in 15. Um, so tough because you can't legislate for that, as, especially as it, it was at the end of, uh, after the deadline for transfer, for transfer to transfer a player um, had gone, so difficult to replace. A lot of people sort of point to managers and sort of say oh they always use this injury excuse but for a club of our size it is actually a genuine thing isn't it I mean it's not like the Liverpool that can replace five players with a squad of 30 it's hard for us isn't it yeah that's right I mean it was a good chance for a few players that came in uh, but it, it was difficult for those players because we had cemented a, a start in 11 and they, they displayed you know, very good performances consistently um, so they hadn't played for a few months and they came back in and had to do it all together, five different players. Uh, some have been loaned out, some have come back and it was a different different vibe on the pitch. Um, unfortunately we had those few draws and, uh, and indeed a couple of defeats as well, two or three defeats and the momentum was killed. Um, but no, it's not probably as easy as higher up but I'd even say if you, you took out Suarez and Gerrard out the out of Liverpool's team last year they wouldn't have finished as high as they did. Okay. Possibly one of the annoying things to, to watch from the spectator's point of view, and I'm sure as well in, in your respect, was the fact that we were still playing really well. I mean, I think about the Colwyn Bay game when, again, we were dominating, but we, we sort of got caught on the sucker punch a couple of times, and then we had to come back each time. You know, that happened for another couple of games. I mean, how, how difficult was that for you to deal with, obviously, on the touchline? Well, it's tough, but uh, you take out a bit of quality out of any team that has discussed it's it, it does hinder your chances. I mean, early on in the season, we probably went back to a similar vein of form as we started the season, stuttering, um, good quality, good passing, uh, good combination play throughout the, the thirds of the field. Uh, but we couldn't, couldn't be root, we weren't ruthless enough. Um, and that summed up certain parts of the season. Uh, and despite injuries, that, that did dictate where we finished. I mean, that obviously nicely leads on to the fact that this summer with your transfers, uh, we've seen some real firepower coming to the club and I know that was one area you sort of thinking last season especially towards the end you know, we seem to be lacking that like I said the ruthlessness in front of a goal but we've got James Walshaw Ryan Kendall's returned Jake Spate I mean obviously oh, we've actually signed a new contract I mean that's four quality strikers I mean the big question has to be is how are you going to play them all? Well you have to wait and see how the friendlies pan out but we've got our plans uh, Macker and I got together shortly after the season and we got together again a few weeks ago and discussed plans, session plans for pre-season, um, leading on to the games and then uh, and then through the games, cementing the way we want to play the, the game plan ahead for the forthcoming season. And, um, we're looking forward to involving the strikers um, in a in a style of play that we think will get the best out of them. Uh, and they've all played in the in the positions that we're going to play them in, and they've all been successful. Uh, but it's one thing that. Frustrating me last year that early on in the season we didn't take our chances, uh, and yet I'm not saying we're going to take every chance that comes our way. But I think hopefully uh, the idea behind everything is to create more and to score more percentage-wise uh, um, uh, chances to to goals, and um, and hopefully that will drive on better results. One of the quotes that um, I remember you <coughs> me, coming out with at the uh, end of last season was that uh, we want warriors and workers. You know, we want players that are going to play the heart and soul out for Harrogate Town. 
And you've gone with a much more tighter knit squad this time, we've noticed. I mean, you've trimmed down to 18 members of uh, the playing mm. staff at the moment. We've obviously a few to come in for trials and, you know, Matt Heath returning yeah. as, as was announced yesterday. Um, do you think that closeness of having such a smaller, tight knit squad? Because, I mean, again, I saw them on training on Tuesday and they look a very close bunch, even just after one session. I know people probably point to that and say, well, how can you say that? That's rubbish. But you had to be there to see it. Mm. I mean, it was amazing the kind of camaraderie that was going on from players that hadn't met each other until that day. Um, but do you see that closeness as being the key? Well, I think so. I think um, I read a few reports last year and I think it spiralled out of control that, uh, you know, this. Uh, uh, notion that we had a 30 man squad, a 25 man squad. We had young lads that have been um, uh, involved at Harrogate Railway, Austin Talby, and, um, that and made the squad have a bigger feel about it. Now, I'm not going to stop that supply of players through the youth in infrastructure um, because I think it's an integral part of the squad, uh, integral part of our future at the club, bringing young players on and whether they're in the mature um, enough to be part of my plans. At first team level at Harrogate Town, or play um, a, a good standard of football either stick, then that is up to them how they grasp it, with the training and with the match experience elsewhere. Uh, so uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to deny it. Yeah, we've said 18 there, but there might be two or three young lads who who uh, go to Billy at Harrogate Railway because we've seen how he he succeeds in, in maturing players. Want to mention some obviously specific players that you brought in? I mean, James Warshaw, for uh, for instance. I mean, massive player last season for Orchardham. You know, twenty eight yeah. years or thereabouts in the league. Um, you've got you had to be really quick off the block to get him. You know, it. it I know he didn't want to travel obviously full time with Orchardham, but mm -hmm. even so, very much you know, respected player, very much wanted amongst the non league. I mean, how difficult was it for you to actually get him? Well, we had a good chat uh, um, shortly after they uh, were successful against Geisley um, and got earned the promotion. Um, we got in touch because we wondered what his situation was with work and whether he'd be interested in joining Harrogate Town. Um, obviously, extra commitment uh, was needed uh, in terms of the, the travelling and time away from his family, and um, he was doing well at his own job. So, a few things worked in our favour, uh, so we got slightly lucky in that respect. Uh, but we sold the club uh, and what we're about and we think that was enough to entice him towards us and um, yeah we want him to be successful you know with us he was, he was a great asset for, for Altrium and uh, he's bought into what we're about so we're delighted he's here and I think as well we had the what was nicknamed probably the worst kept secret in football with Ryan Kendall's uh, transfer <laughs> But again, I mean, I know he's a player that you've admired. You know, when he first came in two thousand and nine, he got the half game against Jordan. But I know he was a player that you actually wanted to keep hold of at the time. I mean, how delighted are you to have him back? Well, it's great. You know, once uh, once you like a player uh, and he's he's in there in your mind, you you know, he's been gnawing away at me the last couple of years. I, I've wanted him to be part of our squad, and he's got pace, he's got hunger in his run, and he, you know, he's got awareness, and his movements off the ball is top class. So we're hoping he's going to be in the uh, in the goals for us. At, again like he has been at Ferriby where his ratio has been fantastic uh, he's a great lad met up with him a couple of times and um, to have him again uh, being a, an integral part of our plans it's, uh, it's great for us Now I mean we all know that forwards can't score without the supply and this season we've seen Lloyd Carey coming in, mm -hmm. um, we've got Simon Lennigan Adam Novakovsky obviously like you say he's back from injury um, other players I know you've got an eye on uh, again, you've got to be excited about the engine room. That's looking very strong this season. Yeah, again, in the review process from last year, we, we, we just thought some of our approach play at times ran out of steam. It wasn't dynamic enough uh, and we needed to look after the ball in, in areas better than we did. Um, looked at a lot of videos of what went right at times when it did go right and what didn't, you know, when, when we didn't get successful results. So. It's about planning ahead, and you can only plan ahead with, if you've got good quality players. And the likes of Lloyd Kerry, watched him a few times with Tamworth, and it, it, you know he's a massive part of their uh, engine room, and he was fan superb, you know, superb box to box, mm. comfortable in possession, good on the half turn, and he doesn't have to get stuck in as well. So it's that type of player. Lewis Turner can join in very well from right back, and um, again successful at stint at, at Chester as well, and he's local. And having these lads so much more local uh, really does help. Got to mention, obviously, 
the defence as well because I mean it's another. I mean we've got you've got Phil Barnes in the first transfer that we um, we announced this summer mm. uh, I mean obviously replacing Craig who's left for Warsaw I mean that again that is just brilliant for the club it's always nice to see a player go to a league club but to sort of jump up to a, a club of Warsaw stature that must have been really pleasing yeah really pleasing it's been linked before to Bradford to Doncaster mm. uh, but the clubs hadn't gone through with the, with a the deal at the time um, but to hear of the interest of Warsaw um, got a few links uh, indirectly there and I, I was delighted um, that uh, him and his agent managed to sort out a move for him and um, that's what he was that's what his aim was uh, to get league football he played two years you know, I remember him coming to reporting to Breezy's in training on trial after being at Stonebridge and I knew then uh, when I saw him warming up with the keepers I thought he's got something special um, and basically it's not due to any clever coaching on our part, it's due to him playing football and, and getting game after game and that's why the likes of you know, uh, Lewis and uh, other youngsters like Simon Manigan will be looking to get game time because this is the platform to play on um, if you want to reach the stars and go much higher. And of course it's not just youngsters that you've brought in and you know, I'm thinking of We've got the experience, like I said, Phil Barnes, a yeah. very experienced goalkeeper. Dave McGurk as well, I mean, I know York City, mm. he's, you know, he's been absolutely massive for them, helping them regain yeah. their league status. Yeah. Again, you know, that's got to be good for you, the mixture of youth and experience. Yeah, trying to get all, all the jigsaw pieces together and, you know, hopefully we're speaking again in a few months and, and they've clicked and it's a lot, of play, a lot of faces to integrate at the same time. But like you said the other night, it's good camaraderie, good chemistry, um, they're all of a similar hungry mindset. But yeah, you just mentioned there, Phil Barnes, wealth of experience, and he's a very different t character um, to Craig. Mm. Uh, both great guys, um, but uh, he's very outgoing. Um, he's Barnesy, so he's he'll soon be part of the furniture. Um, he'll he'll definitely help the back for his unit. And uh, Reese Maynard, um, mm. that fell in my lap really, because you know a little bit surprised that uh, he he was available in the summer. So we met him. He's a real winner, uh, determined, very good on the ball. Uh, coming forward either from left back or out of midfield, um, and you mentioned another player, you know, another player. Uh, Dave McGurk. That's one. <laughs> Don't forget him. Yeah, Dave McGurk. Um, again, so much experience, um, and I've known him for several years. Again, so he's uh, he's going to be a, stead a real steady and influence at the back four, um, and he'll help the help the likes of the young centre halves like Franksy and, and Shane Killer, who you know we've got to remind ourselves are still very young. Indeed. I think one of the things that I would like to clear up as well is that some things that got mentioned when we uh, announced the retain and release list and sort of people looked at the release list and went, oh blimey, you know, why has he got rid of players like them? A lot of it sometimes isn't down to you, is it? A lot of it is sometimes personal circumstance of the players. Mm. And there was a few instances this time as well where that actually, you know, affected your decision. Well, yes. Uh, I mean, if you don't make difficult decisions, you're never going to change the, the face of the squad. And I just felt that um, we needed to make a few changes and uh, improve certain areas. Very difficult decisions on some. Um, I'd say like Adam Bold have been great for the club. Uh, Dave Merris, superb um, legend of the club. Dwayne Samuels, full of energy, but travelling half the length of the country to get here. So, mm -hmm. not workable um, if he's not starting. Um, invariably, he did, but on the occasions he didn't, it's, it's a heck of a long way, a heck of a commitment. Um, the difficult decisions to make, uh, one that one some that didn't rest easily but had to be made uh, in my opinion and um, I'm glad we have done because it's, we've discussed the lads who are coming in and we're all hoping that they're going to be a success for us. It's not just the first team that have undergone changes, I mean obviously we've seen how successful the development teams were um, last mm -hmm. season and the academy side as well I know that there are new plans for and bigger plans for and yeah. if there's anything you can share with us on camera yeah we yeah we're, we're now we've had a, a good partnership with Weatherby High School um, and one at Ask and Brian uh, with the academy setups so two academy setups but we're bringing the one from Weatherby uh, closer to home in fact at our home at the CNG Stadium so we're going to be running an elite academy uh, squad uh, running from the CNG Stadium as from September, uh, so that's 16 to 18 year olds, and you know we're looking to, uh, you know, for the cream to uh, arrive from there, and, and eventually end up in the first team. I mean, what benefits do you foresee? You know, having obviously brought it so close to home. Well, you get more time spent, uh, 
you know, for me as a manager, um, they're part of the everyday setup, so they get that football vibe all the time. They're looking at the sort of pitch. They're, yeah, they're doing some study in a classroom, but they're they're part of the football club. They'll be part of the football coaching and into the community, the plans that we've got there, and um, it generally it's away from that um, classroom feel around a, a school um, where it's been a great link. Uh, now it's been an, an, a long term goal to get it to, uh, at our home. Yeah. And one thing that's going to benefit them obviously is the works that are going on at the ground. I mean, obviously, yeah. the exciting news being the new stand is going to start yeah. after the people on bicycles have gone through Harrogate. Yeah. I mean, the atmosphere that that's going to create, because obviously, blocking in that end, the noise that should come back to us, that's really, you know, that's going to be great on match days. It's huge, yeah, it's going to be great for us um, to enclose that, that space. Um, uh, for the atmosphere alone, it'll be super, but also for the fans, we hope it's going to be a be better experience. Uh, coming along on a rainy uh, November night that they can be standing under that and it, hopefully it'll be our new cop and that's what we want, we want a wall of noise but uh, obviously we've got to deliver on the pitch for that but um, appearance appearance wise as well it, the, the ground is looking proper mm. you know it's looking right up there with the best at our level and, and we, we had to catch up with, with some, some a lot of the other clubs at our level and um, hopefully we're, we're at that point now I mean, when you walked into the ground in 2009, could you envisage all these changes that were going on? Uh, no, I mean, part of my application was, you know, where do you see it going, what are your plans, and, and, and uh, part of that, obviously, the main aim was the first team to, to be succeeding, but underneath that, I wanted to bring in a youth infrastructure, and um, eventually, as a whole, the club growing, and definitely, High on the agenda was going into the schools and, and that being a greater community feel, and uh, we're well on, well on the way in uh, in those items on the agenda. I mean, one thing's for certain: it's certainly been a ride over the last five years, hasn't it? I mean, oh, did, you, yeah. did you ever expect you know expect it to be anything like this? Well, Keith Alexander, um, uh, the late Keith Alexander, told me you, you're you're not at all surprised after the first year <laughs> in management. Well, I think he was wrong, <laughs> probably the only time he was wrong in his, in his career, but uh, no, I've had a lot of surprises along the way, some good, some bad, but um, as long as I keep learning, keep my head up, then uh, you know, we, can, we can all aim to achieve. Now, I'm not going to put you on the spot and say, you know, where do you want Harrogate to, to, to finish this season, because I mean, the answer is blatantly obvious, but you know, from your own personal hopes and expectations, you know, what are you looking for? What are you looking for, you know, to come to the forefront of this season? Probably more consistent uh, repeat performances of, we had our real highs last year, you know, real good performances, probably both Altrium games, Stockport game at home. Uh, we knocked some goals in last year, had a good home record. We want to improve that home record, but definitely improve the away. So that means more resilience, you know, in displays where we perhaps were a bit fluffy um, around the seams at times. I want an um, aggressive team, an intense team, you know, and a winning one. It's not going to be easy, uh, but with similar mindsets and you know, hopefully we can achieve those things. Uh, but we need to keep progressing, we need to keep progressing. But I'm not going to set any targets. I might in the changing room, but um, I'm not going to make a run for my home back just yet, uh, you know, on camera, but uh, you know, we're, we're hoping to do well. I mean, one of the other questions as well is the West Riding County Cup. I mean, we had a great run and obviously bit of a disappointing final but we had that injury to Chris Hall. I mean, have you heard anything from Chris recently? Yeah, you? yeah, I made contact a couple of days ago. Uh, he's still waiting for his operation but Chris being Chris, he's done everything, you know, everything he physically possibly can do in the gym to prepare his body so that once the oper operation's done he can solely focus on that area in and around the need to strengthen that so he can come back and, and perform. So hopefully the sooner the better. Mm. Simon, as ever, a total pleasure. Cheers. Thank you very much for being here.